Northeast Arnhem Land is a remote pocket of the Northern Territory. Culture here runs strong in a deep connection to this pristine country. Just travelled 500 k's, did the milk run through East Arnhem Land this morning, stopping in a few communities to get out here. And we're about to head into town. Uh, it looks like 2,000 station here regular. Chances are you've never heard of a business called Alpa, the Arnhem Land Progress Aboriginal Corporation. But it employs 1,200 people and contributes $40 million a year into the local economy and is now a business model across the country. The one thing about Alpa is the, the soul of Alpa is, a, is good, right? It's there for the, all the right reasons. It's there for uh, our members, our people in communities, and it's there to, to do essential services and to work with local people within their worldview. So it's very easy to get on that journey and forget to get off of it. Alpa recently marked 50 years of operations. On board for 30 of those years is their CEO, Alistair King. He opted to come to the island of Millingimby as a fresh-faced chap in 1993. We looked at each other and said, let's go and do an adventure. Uh, so there was a job in Arnhem Land, and so I had to pull out the atlas. It was certainly a tree change. I've got to tell you, when we landed there, we sort of looked at each other and got, said, what have we just done? Uh, we've landed in this very remote place that we know nothing about um, uh, with where we for the first time in our lives were a minority. He says the early days were a challenge. We were a very small organisation. We had no money, everything we had to plan, everything uh, very carefully. Their mission was to bring a reliable source of affordable, nutritious food to Arnhem Land, connecting clans and importantly, overcoming a welfare dependency. But Alpa's story started much earlier, as celebrated in an exhibition at the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory. Well, I have seen great change from how Alpa have achieved uh, from back in the days and how it became Alpa as today. From the 1600s, the local Yolnu people of Arnhem Land traded with the Makassan Trepang fishermen from Indonesia, providing a safe haven in exchange for fabrics, tobacco and rice. When missionaries arrived in the 1900s, they set up churches, as well as significant local infrastructure and enterprise. In Galawinku Mission, a local store was established in 1942, and it was thriving. There were seven original communities and they all decided that it was better for them to run the stores than to let the government take them over. So they incorporated Alpa. Alpa paid the church money for the sheds, the plant equipment and the stock. But the, but the missionaries helped run Alpa for the, I would say, for the first 20 years. Because Alpa has been so successful with retail management, they now offer a range of services to communities across Australia. There is also a retail training school available. They can provide on-the-job training for all your staff. Alpa shifted its focus to training in the 1980s, becoming a registered training organisation. And that's been a main pillar of operations ever since. So we became an RTO because we were so focused on training and evolving people in our business to not just uh, retail store people, but duty managers and supervisors and um, really making sure that we were invested in their success to go to the next level. By 2013, they had more than 20 stores, but decided they needed to expand, taking a federal government community development program contract, which essentially gets people working for employment benefits. It was a huge task. Quite literally. Aboriginal organisations have skin in the game. They have Aboriginal directors, they have their local people, their members that hold them to account. So taking on these government programs would make more of a difference at the coalface. So although we were really nervous about taking on a government program, 
The board said we are not the Arnhem Land Progress Retail Corporation. We really need to look at what we can do and expand services to our members. There are now 27 stores across Northern Australia, including in Cape York and the Torres Strait. There is also a myriad of enterprises under the Alpo brand. And that's what we want to see in today's modern society. Yulngo and Balanda working together to succeed and to open a new door of hope. A cornerstone of the organisation is Indigenous decision making and leadership. It's overseen by a board of Aboriginal directors that hail from across Arnhem Land. People call it peppies, um, just a, yeah, the shellfish. We call it Diamo. Alpha has been a big part of the Yolongo people here in Arnhem Land. It started off with our old people, our ancestors, and I'm proud to say that my grandmother, who helped raise me, was a big part of ELPA. She has been a board member for a while, for a long time, when I was younger. Um, checking for ads, you're on the radio. Yep. Josephine Baker manages Ruku Lodge for visitors to Millingimby Island. The family business, but it's also partnership with ELPA. She's seen a big impact on the local women who work in the lodge and appreciates being able to hold a senior job on country. It makes me feel better because I'm back at home. Um, like I said, my passion that was passed down to me by my grandmother is to make sure that I'm here for my people, supporting them, whether it's um, in the little things as like, you know, instead of a, um, someone else coming in and managing them, I want to make them feel that, you know, that you can be in my position, that you can, like, you know, we can do this if we work together. Alpa also runs accommodation at Ramanginning and helps to support high-end furniture maker Manapan on Millingimby Island, whose products have been sold around the world. Bookmark Construction started in 2017 for small maintenance and repairs to Shire Council housing and has now expanded even delivering on the Territory's largest new remote housing construction contract. And while 75% of Alpa's workforce is Indigenous, their story has drawn people from far and wide. We just came here with no expectations. And we came here and we've just got on with it and it's been the best move ever. That's, it really has. And the guys, the community are brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. They've forged strong friendships with the locals and especially the other store workers. I am, so they call me Momo, so I think that's lovely. It's and so even from the customers, they come in and shout Momo, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> you used to ask, what's Momo? And then told me it means grandmother. Florence is one of those dedicated employees who is meant to retire, but can't quite bring herself to do it. Think about it and I go up, because it's my life, my life. I put my life into that job. A big priority for Alba has been reducing chronic disease through access to better food, a major issue where remote prices can be crippling. Alba has been entirely subsidising freight on fresh produce in their stores for around 40 years. When we ramped it up in the early 2000s from a, just a policy to a strategy, we're employing our first nutritionist and all that, um, Everyone, government was on board. We had a lot of support for what we were trying to do. Suppliers came on board. They understood what we were trying to do because we had the data. We showed them the chronic health issues that were out in remote communities. They don't want that as their legacy. Sugar is now a big focus. And in the last five years, they've cut sugar sales in their store by 130 tonnes. As, as we talk about healthy people, strong culture, active lifestyle within the community livelihood, uh, we wanted to really put that focus on healthy eating. It's not just the businesses. In communities right across Arnhem Land, you can see Alpa's influence, from night patrol to youth group, social support, all of this can be funded because Alpa isn't reliant on government or charity funding. It's extremely profitable in its own right and can invest back into its people. 
The Community Care Fund also pays for things like funeral ceremonies, community transport and youth events, and has brought in the East Arnhem Land Youth Model, which supports activities in Nilingimbi, Ramanginin, Gapawiak and Gallawinku. As for the next 50 years... The evolution of ALPA has been this epic journey and it's been a very good one, I think. You know, we've had lots of good successes, but we've also had our failures. Not everything turns to gold, you know. But I think that we've... Um, it, that's what motivates you to keep going. It's never easy and that I just want my people to keep developing um, and just to remember that failure is just another reason for you for us to succeed in the future. I look there. I look here. I look around me and I wonder what it took yesterday to create today. And so a way of telling Alpa story in Arnhem Land is a way of saying, OK, thank you, they've done this. We are here. What can we do now for the future?